Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, I'm in a new space. It's a new year, we have a new president, and there have been so many other exciting changes in my life that have caused me to be absent from YouTube for a while, so I apologize. But one of the biggest changes that's happened um, in 2021 is that I landed myself a new job. <laughs> so today, in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about kind of what I've learned over the last couple years, just applying to different jobs online and um, my experiences throughout interviews. And I'm gonna give you some some tips on how to land an interview and how to land a new job. So here we go. My number one tip is to only apply to jobs that have been posted for a week or less. And the reason I say this is because a lot of job postings that have been posted for more than a week are usually jobs that are actually no longer out there on the market, a candidate has already been chosen, or likely if they've been posted for more than a week, they've already had just hundreds and hundreds of applicants and there's just no chance that your resume will ever be seen by a real human by the time you apply for the job. So applying to jobs is a really tedious, time-consuming process. And if you're applying to old job postings, you're really just wasting your time. And I think the biggest takeaway that I've learned from applying to so many jobs over the last couple years and trying to find the job that I want the most is um, not to waste your time and effort into things that just you have very little chance of hearing back from. My number two tip is not to resume spam. And by resume spam, what I mean is don't just send your generic resume out to hundreds and hundreds of job applications. Number one, like I said, um, is because applying for jobs is super time consuming and it takes a lot of energy and effort. And the more just resumes you send out there, the more time it's gonna take. And honestly, you're probably only gonna hear back from a very small percentage of those jobs. So you really only wanna be applying to jobs that you're super excited and qualified for and jobs that you'd actually be willing to take if you were to hear back from the company. You don't wanna spend a lot of energy applying to just any old job on the internet that's been out there for you know two months that you'll never actually hear back from. My number three tip that relates to number two is to always tweak your resume based on the job application keywords. Whenever you apply to a new job, you always, always need to make sure that the words hidden throughout your resume match things that are in the job description. And this is because unlike the old days, despite what your parents or grandparents might tell you, um, people don't look at your resume anymore. Bots do. Bots are always the first person, the first person <laughs> to scan your resume to see if you're qualified. From there, if enough keywords actually match the job description, your resume will be taken out of kind of the holding place and actually be put into an HR representative's lap. Um, another really important tip that's kind of related to this is that if you're ever curious how much your resume matches the job application description or the job description that you're applying for, there are tons of websites on the internet that will actually allow you to copy and paste your resume into a box and the job description into a box and compare the two to see how aligned your resume is with the job description. I'll link some of those websites below because it's really interesting to see how disconnected your resume is from the job description. In in addition to this, it's always good to look at the company website and see kind of what their values are and add some of those keywords from their value statements or just their mission statement into your resume as well so that they can tell that you've done a little bit of research on what the company is all about. Now, let's say by chance you've heard back from somebody from the company, whether it just be a bot or HR or um, perhaps a hiring manager if you're lucky. It's always important, number four, to do tons of research on the company and if you speak to a real person and not a bot, to do a lot of research on the person who you're actually talking to. Now this is gonna sound a little bit uh, creepy, <laughs> But if I'm being honest, this is exactly what I do. So in addition to just, you know, obviously looking at the company website, looking up the reviews and what people have to say about the company on like Glassdoor or LinkedIn, it's really smart if you're talking to a real person from the company to go up and look them up on LinkedIn and see what they're all about understand what their position is relative to you know the company ladder maybe perhaps even what their casual hobbies or interests are if you can find something on their linkedin profile or anywhere on the internet that shows what they're interested in you can use those interests and connect with them over the phone so that they're able to remember you after your phone conversation is over i know this sounds super creepy but i've literally done that with every person i've talked to over the last two years <laughs> i've looked their linkedin up i've looked what schools they've 
gone to. I've looked up what their degrees were in, other companies that they were interested in to try to see what their background education might be in. Um, and actually it's really helped. I remember when I got my previous job, the hiring manager actually went to the same school as me. So I immediately connected with him based off of our alumni status. <laughs> My number five tip is to ask genuine questions to the interviewer and act super excited about the job that you're applying for. Obviously, people are looking at your resume and looking at you as a potential candidate because they've seen that you're qualified on paper. But, you know, a lot of these people really just want to know if you're excited and willing to take on new and exciting projects and learn a lot with them. So even if you might not be the most qualified candidate out there, and even if there's a little bit of shortcoming on your resume, if you show them that you are willing to put in the work and that you're excited about the company's mission and just what they've got going on you will guaranteed stand out more from the crowd than some guy who you know might have a master's degree or you know some higher education but are just kind of meh about the prospects of working for the company so whenever you interview or talk to anybody with the, with the company whether it be your hiring manager someone from hr or whoever it may be just make sure you sound super excited about the job um, and just show a lot of enthusiasm my number six tip is that whenever you talk to someone whether it be an hr or a hiring manager to act super humble and gracious for the opportunity to talk to them obviously everybody knows that when you're done with an interview you send a thank you letter you know almost immediately afterwards just you know reminding them of who you are and what you have to offer and that you're thankful to talk to them but even throughout the interview i think it's really important to just be honest and um you know level yourself and just recognize that even if you know a lot about the job or about the company never to act like you're a know-it-all or that you might know just as much as they do because likely a lot of the people hiring you have been working for the company for a long time and they don't need someone acting like you know a complete expert it's likely that you're not an expert stick up for you know your experiences and what you know but never act like you you know know it all because nobody likes a know it all <laughs> and my seventh seventh and final tip is that if you make it all the way to the end you feel like you've done as best of a job as you could in the interview but you hear back and it's a no is to not take rejection personally. It's always important to remember that a lot of companies already have a candidate in mind. Even if they post something online and they're interviewing other people, a lot of companies legally have to um, look outside the company and interview with multiple candidates before they can just make a final decision in hiring one person within the company. So there are a lot of extraneous factors that um, can influence their final decision. And likely it's not anything that you did. You can nail an interview and they might already have someone else in mind that they just you know, wanna move forward with, but legally have to uh, interview you. <laughs> so whatever it may be, whatever the final outcome is, never take rejection personally. It just wasn't meant for you. And you'll find something better and greater for you in the future. Job searching takes a long time. To get the job that I just got this past month, I applied to almost 40 different jobs. I only heard back from three companies, and that was when I was really targeting a specific industry and specific jobs. Like I said, I wasn't resume spamming. I was only applying to about two jobs a week. Applying for jobs can take a long time, and that's okay, but you just don't wanna give up. You wanna move forward, even if you get rejected. Um, so yeah, don't take it personal. It's all just business. This is a little side tip, but um, for me personally, I did not spend a lot of time on LinkedIn looking for new jobs. Most of my job searching happened on Glassdoor, which I didn't network on at all, but I just felt like the job postings were turned around faster there, so I was always getting, um, I was being able to see job postings faster than those that were being posted onto LinkedIn. You can look at what interview questions you might have based off of the job title that you're applying for. You can look at the range of salary of your potential job. And there's just so much more kind of personal and less professional information on Glassdoor that makes the whole job application process seem more transparent. So yeah, if I were you, I would utilize Glassdoor a lot more than you utilize LinkedIn. So that's it for me. Those were about seven, eight tips on how to land an interview and land a new job. Um, I'm so sorry that it's been so long since I've posted, but now that I'm settled in my new space, hopefully I will be posting more. Um, my February budget will probably be my next video. Um, <laughs> I had kind of a crazy past month and a half with Christmas and moving and all this new stuff. So um, yeah, my routine will be back to normal and I hope to see you guys again soon. 
Thanks for watching.